In this video, we're going to talk about how to fill up your calendar playing great paying gigs. Now, the kind of gigs that I'm mostly going to talk about are weddings, because for a local working musician, weddings do pay the best. Uh, bars and restaurants don't pay very well, and even though you can get booked up a lot in those kind of uh, kind of venues, it's just it still doesn't add up to a whole lot of money. But if you can get the better paying gigs, the wedding gigs, whether you're uh, as a guitarist uh, doing instrumental stuff for the ceremony, or if you're a DJ during the reception, or if you've got your band playing at the reception, those are the gigs that really pay the best. So how can you get as many of those kind of gigs as possible? You know, if you stay in your hometown, you stay limited to your hometown, you're limiting the, you know, the potential gigs that you can get. But if you have the ability to do a little bit of traveling, and when I say traveling, I don't mean going on tour. I mean, you just expand your driving radius. You know, how far away from your hometown are you willing to drive to go to a gig? Uh, and ideally you would just drive to the gig, play the gig, turn around and come home. If you go there and you start spending money on hotels, that's going to eat up your, your, your pay. Um, but because these kind of gigs pay really well, it can be worth it to spend a little bit of money on travel expenses to go play a gig. It's not going to be worth it to go play a bar gig in another city. Uh, if you're only getting paid three or 400 bucks for the, for the whole band, you know, maybe you personally are only making a hundred bucks for that gig. Yet you had to spend a whole tank of gas getting there and back to the gig. It's kind of not worth it to do it like that. But if you were doing a wedding where you're making 800 bucks, then it's worth it. Even if you had to get a, get one night in a hotel at, you know, maybe you spend 120 bucks on a hotel, you know, uh, and then a little bit of gas, it still could be worth it to do that. So that's what we're going to talk about is expand your geography in order to, uh, to get more of those kind of gigs. Really, you should be able to drive pretty far and it would still be worth it to play a gig like that because you're getting paid pretty well. Uh, it's a lot easier if you're a solo act or if it's just you, if you're a DJ, for example, it's a lot easier than dragging a whole band along because with a band, you've got multiple people in a car. You may have to take more than one car. You might have to pull a trailer with all your equipment in it, or you might have to big, have a bigger truck or something like that to have all your equipment. That It gets a lot more uh, expensive and the logistics get to be a lot more complicated having so many people involved that all have to travel to this gig. And if you're trying to do that on a regular basis to make more money, that becomes a challenge. So I, I think probably this works the best if it's just you. So if you you know, have your vehicle and you can put everything that you need in the vehicle and it's just you and off you go, you have a pretty lightweight, you know, travel rig that you can take around and you can travel a lot farther, a lot easier than you could if you were bringing a whole band along. Um, so what kind of gigs can you do like that? Well, like, like I was saying, uh, a solo guitarist obviously can do that. If you're just playing acoustic guitar at the ceremony, then all you need is your guitar and maybe a little small PA speaker and a couple of other little accessories like a, a wireless lapel mic for the, for the efficient there uh, and uh, maybe a, a, an iPod to play some other music through it. Uh, that's a pretty small setup there if that's all you're doing. And if you can get paid anywhere from five to 800 bucks for doing a gig like that, then it's worth it to drive to the next city to play those kind of gigs. Even if you just drive there, play it and turn around and go home. Um, it can be worth it to do that kind of gig. Um, by my calculations, it can be worth it to travel a lot farther than just the next city. It could be, you know, a seven or eight hour drive. If you don't mind driving, um, the money still works out, even though you're spending more on gas, uh, even if you drive that far and get a hotel for one night, it can still be worth it if you're getting paid enough. Now, I'll tell you how you can uh, really make the most amount of money for something like that is if you can do both. If you can be uh, playing guitar for the ceremony and if you can also DJ the reception, because for the reception, then you can charge another chunk of money, let's say five, six hundred bucks for that. So all told, you could be making... 12, 13, $1,400 for that one gig. And so if it's just you, you throw everything you need in the back of your car or in your SUV or your minivan or whatever it is you have, you drive to that city. Even if the city is six hours away, even if you have to get a hotel, it's well worth it. And so what that means is when you start doing your marketing, when you uh, start looking for customers, advertising yourself, putting yourself out there, get yourself listed as being available in other cities, not just your hometown. So where should you uh, do your advertising? Well, get yourself listed on wedding websites. And the easy way to find that is just go to Google or any search engine and type in, let's say, 
wedding guitarist or wedding DJ or wedding band. And what you're going to get is a whole, you know, several pages of all these different companies that do weddings. You probably won't get too many listings of actual bands or actual DJs. You'll get, uh, these various vendor websites like the knot and other sites like that, that, you know, you go to their, go to their website and they have everything in the world that a, that a bride needs, including a vendor section, which is where you can get yourself listed, whether you're a guitarist or other solo uh, instrumentalist, uh, or you're a DJ, or if you have your band, um, you can get yourself listed there. And it's better to just get listed on a whole bunch of those because that way, you know, whenever the bride and groom start searching, Google looking for all the things that they need to put their wedding together. They're going to, whatever, whichever website they go to, there you are, you're listed there. Uh, and you, you know, whatever services you're providing, whether it's playing guitar or DJ or, or a band or whatever, make sure that you've got a good photo and a good description and a link to your own webpage where you, maybe you got a video and you get, maybe you got a song list, all the stuff you need to, uh, to sell yourself as a, as a, something that they're going to want. So then when it comes time to start trying to fill up your calendar, well, because these are the best paying gigs, you want to give them priority. So if you get booked for a wedding, you know, say April, May, obviously, you know, you want to book those and give those the priority over any other kind of gigs that you're doing. And if you can get 20 or 30 wedding gigs throughout the year, those are the ones that pay really well. And then all your other days, you could book up with the lesser paying gigs like bar gigs and stuff like that. So if you've got a band, a bar band, for example, or if you're a soloist or whatever it is that you do, or you're playing in a duo or any kind of act like that, um, give those good paying gigs a priority. Obviously, uh, those are usually going to be booked way in advance. Anyways, people start booking, you know, weddings as much as a year in advance, six months to a year in advance, they start playing it out and they want to lock you in and you can get that deposit and get yourself locked in, uh, for that date. And you put it on your calendar and you know where you're going to be on that date. And, usually that's going to be months in advance. So then you start booking up your other dates for, you know, your other band gigs. So if you're playing in bars and stuff like that, then you start filling in the calendar that way. So that way you're getting the most value out of your, out of your dates as possible. So, but to get as many of those good paying gigs as possible, you want to make yourself available in as many cities as possible. So your hometown obviously is where you start, but you know, look on a map and figure out, you know, what are some of the other cities that, or would be worth it for you to drive to, you know, is it just a three hour drive to that city? Is it a six hour drive? Is it a five hour drive and look in every direction all around from where, from where your city is and, you know, do a radius and figure out what are the cities that it would be worth it to drive to, to do a gig and then get yourself listed in those cities as well. That's the kind of mentality you should have. If you're going to be a working musician, you have to be kind of an entrepreneur and you have to figure out how can you, get in more customers. And one of those ways is to expand your geography, expand your customer base. And that's one of the ways you can do that. And so one of the ways that you can save a little bit of money, if you don't want to spend money on a hotel is just plan it in such a way so that you, you know, you take a nap on the way home or something like that. I've done that kind of thing before. So if you've got a gig that's far away, get up in the morning on, you know, Saturday morning, most weddings are on Saturdays. So get up in the morning, drive to the gig, uh, get there at say two o'clock in the afternoon, get yourself all set up, uh, play through the, the ceremony and the reception. If you're going to be playing this reception, uh, then after you're all done, pack up and start making your way home. If you start getting tired on the way home, well, just go to a rest area and take a nap in your car on the way home rather than spending money on a hotel. If you don't want to spend money on a hotel. Um, but if you're getting paid enough and if you're doing these and if the gig is particularly far away, it might be worth it to get a hotel. So those are my tips on how to fill up your calendar with the best paying gigs as a local working musician. If you have any uh, comments or any other ideas or any questions, drop a line to me below. Uh, and also make sure you hit the like button and the subscribe and hit the little bell and all the things you normally do on a YouTube video. And thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.